Hey y'all, it's Alex and welcome back to my channel. If you joined me yesterday, you were here for day one of what I am now calling Paint Marker Month because 12 days of paint markers is a lot more words. But I am going through 12 total brands of acrylic paint markers to find out which one is truly Gesundheit the best of all of them. If you missed the first episode and you would also like to keep following along, I'm gonna be trying hopefully to have every single one of these up a straight 12 day shot. We will see how that goes. But today we are going to be doing the marker brand that I intended to include with the Poskas yesterday, Molotos. This is the second brand that I ever had experience with as far as paint markers go. But first let me cover a few things. First, every paint marker will be graded on three sections. That is the packaging, the swatching, and the drawing. We will get more into the details once we get to those sections. Um, I also don't think I said this yesterday, but it's going to be important as we go along here. Um, I was not paid to tell you about any of these brands. No one has sponsored me. I bought all of these with my own money. Ouch. Molotos in particular is a brand that I've had a little bit of experience with. When I started getting into paint markers, I didn't feel quite safe using all of the very bright saturated colors that Poskas have, and Molotos were available in my local Blick Arts, and they happen to have a more neutrals and naturals color selection. I have a pretty good selection of Molotow colors, so the illustration part will kind of be more similar to the Poskas, where I'm just going to grab whatever colors I deem necessary. I will say for the drawing section, to give everybody a fair chance across the board, everybody is going to be getting a line art done with Posca fine liners, just because I don't have fine liners for every single brand in this series. But without further ado, why don't we get into the packaging for Molotow markers? Let's start off with the pros of this marker. Since they're refillable, they come with this gauge of just how much you should refill your marker. But also this means you can see just how much of the paint is left. So this definitely puts it above the Poskas for that point. Um, let's see. I noticed this earlier. This particular marker says semi-gloss. It's the most recent marker I've gotten in my collection. None of the others say that they're semi-gloss. Like here's two other ones that I bought recently and they all have the same description here. Just that they're acrylic based, permanent, good UV resistance. Do not mix effect colors with plain colors. I have no idea what that means. The biggest problem I have with these markers is the only place that the color name and number are listed is right here on this little sticker that every time I see it, I think, oh, this is just a seller sticker. I can remove it. Obviously they have to include the color name and number somewhere else on their beautifully designed packaging. They don't. I'm 90% sure it's so that way they don't have to produce different labels for every color of marker but it is a little disappointing. If you're a fidgeter like me, it's really tempting to peel these off. And if you peel that off, you're kind of SOL as far as knowing the color name. I like how the brand name is right front and center. It's really easy to pick these out based on the, um, based on the cap. I always think it's supposed to be a W, but it's supposed to be an M. Seeing the ink inside is enough of a bonus that I will give these a five. Now let's get into the swatching. We're going to be using Ceramic Light Pastel as our light color, which is never as light as I expect it to be. And then this is Future Green. I also expect to be darker. I feel like these caps aren't 100% faithful to the actual colors they end up being. I specifically wanted to get one of each of their nib sizes for this because one of these I feel is drastically better than the other. So here is the large size, and here is the smaller. For both of them you do get pretty good um, consistency of shape, but the large one has a lot more texture around the outside. The green also just splattered all over my desk. Okay, I will have to clean that up. So for the lines, 
Again, it's a little fuzzy on the tail end, but it's a lot better on the smaller nib. Now we're gonna do two layers. And between the two nibs, I feel like the smaller nib is softer. So it even here you can see this one is starting to rip up the page a little bit, but this one isn't. Time for a second layer. The future green is also a lot juicier. So I have to wonder whether or not one nib is putting out more ink. Paint, I keep saying ink. So as for the opacity changes between the two, I can see a tiny bit of a difference in the blue, not very much in the green, though I know for a fact that when I use this one on canvases, it does need two layers. On to the gesso test. This test is to replicate a more textured canvas. Not really any splattering from <sighs> Well, this is the point where the video is going to have to go in a little bit of a different direction. Um, I edited this video all the way through, exported it, deleted it from my computer because I needed the space to record and edit all the other ones. And then when I went to upload it to YouTube, the video is gone. It just cuts off here. Luckily, I separately saved all of the drawing sections, but we have lost the rest of the swatching section. It's such a shame, isn't it, my little assistant? So instead, we're going to have to cover all of the little bits and baubles about the rest of the swatch page by just looking at the completed one. The varnish is where we have some really bad problems. I like to apply my varnish going in multiple directions and it just instantly started lifting up. And I think it's kind of the same problem here where any liquid will reactivate the paint. It loses a point each on layerability and varnish. In the last row, it doesn't really have too bad of an opacity. I can't really see the pencil line through this one. I can see the color raised pencil just a little bit, but it's not enough to take a point off of. Where it did lose a point is the colored pencil. I felt like I wasn't able to get a very good gradient going across the light blue. The future green was fine, but it could be better all around. So that's only half a point off, which means in the end, by losing one point on the varnish, one point on the layering, half a point on the colored pencil means that in the swatching department, they have received a three and a half. Now, let's continue on to the drawing section. Every paint marker in the series has been randomly matched up with one illustration, and these were all randomly generated. For this particular illustration, it is a hyena furry who has hair with bangs going over her eyes, holding a little pet beetle, wearing a fishnet shirt and a vampire's cloak. After being sure to erase at least the more important pencil lines, I started to go in with the lightest color in this series. And I was a little disappointed that it wasn't as light as I was expecting. This poison green Molotow marker has been kind of sitting on my shelf for a little while and I've been wanting a reason to use it. And I decided this was the time and it just ended up being a little bit more dark than the cap led me to believe. I did really like how it blended with the Lago Blue, I believe is that greenish teal. I stuck very close to greens and teals for this color palette at first. And I noticed something pretty early on. There is a difference in how the two pen nib types feel. There's the two millimeter pen nib and the four millimeter pen nib. And this future green, which is the dark green, isn't actually a very old marker, but it feels so much softer and malleable. And it just doesn't scratch the paper as much as the four millimeter nib does. And unfortunately the green is the only two millimeter nib I used in this entire process. For the majority of her skin, I used this Mr. Green color. It's a nice 
I'd call it a pretty normal green. It doesn't lean particularly towards blue or towards green, but I had some problems with it. We'll get to that in a minute. The Lago Blue Pastel that I used for the hair and the shorts just never ends up being the color I want it to be. The cap is nice and bright, but it comes out this really ashy blue. So I ended up going back over it, I believe with Ceramic Blue Pastel and did all of the shadows with the shock blue. I've used the Mr. Green on the skin tone for dozens of pieces and I've never quite been happy with it. It lays down really patchy. I had to keep going back over it. As much as I originally really liked these markers, these were the first paint markers I ever bought because I was really scared of Posca Pen's hyper-saturated colors and Molito had a really desaturated color palette and I was like, this feels more comfortable. I'm gonna learn how to use these with this brand instead. I'm realizing now that they aren't quite wowing me anymore. Specifically, after I let it dry for a few hours, after two coats, I came back and I noticed this weird crackling texture. And this is, it's, it's only two coats of marker and I didn't lay it down very thick, but wherever there were little pools of ink, I started getting this crackling texture. And I realized this is kind of something that has been ruining a few of my pieces. So this marker might be the culprit. It might be laying it on too thick, but I experience this more with Molito markers than I do with literally any other marker. For the liner, I used Posca pens because I don't currently own any Molito fine liners and I honestly don't think I'm going to. I believe right now the only markers they have in their extra fine size are Signal White and Signal Black and I've kind of been moving away from doing entirely black liner, though this piece needed it because none of my Posca pens were dark enough. Some brands out there really need to start making a wider variety of dark fine line pens because I need that in my life. I think every piece in this series is going to get the same treatment of a white outline and some sparkles all around because who doesn't need some good sparkle? Now, I was surprised when I was peeling up the tape that I got a little bit of paint sneaking through underneath the tape edge, which, I'll be honest, didn't happen to many pieces throughout this series. So, the crackling and the paint sneaking under the edge and the colors not quite being what I wanted them to be just made it a little disappointing at the end of this piece. As for the scorecard, Molito got a two in the drawing section just because the cracking was really frustrating. The color match to some of the caps was really off and it just, I thought I liked these markers and I just ended up really frustrated with them. So overall, uh, also sorry for my fingernail. Um, so overall the score is a 10 and a half for Molotov markers. But this is the second in the paint marker marathon. Here is how the piece yesterday turned out, and I hope you guys return tomorrow for the next in my little paint marker marathon. Mm -hmm.